In the current race to our autonomous driving future, who will be the first company to deliver full self-driving feature complete? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. I recently read an article about autonomous driving, and this article had a graphic from Navigant Research, their leaderboard grid, and it showed which companies were, in their opinion, leading in autonomous driving and those who were lagging behind. Interestingly enough, they had Tesla lagging behind, they had Waymo, GM, and Ford in the lead. So I took a few minutes and dove into the data for each one of these companies. And I found out very quickly that really only Waymo had some serious data, some serious autonomous miles, and really showed promise towards autonomous driving. Of course, knowing what I know about Tesla and their autopilot system and how that all works, I know that they are also a leader. And so in this video, I want to take a moment and talk about the two main leaders in the race towards autonomous driving, Waymo and Tesla. And I want to focus on a few key metrics technology differences, and determine, based on this data, who will likely be the first to full self-driving. So the first category I think that's important to talk about is the sensor suite. What sensors does each of these companies use to be able to get to full self-driving so the car can function by itself in its environment? One of the main sensor differences on the system that Waymo uses versus Tesla is computer vision of Tesla versus a LiDAR-reliant system like Waymo. LiDAR, just if you don't know, is simply a light detection and ranging system which bounces lasers off objects at millions of pulses per second, and then the car measures the changes in distance, and the laser pulses bounce back to give these readings. A camera-based system instead uses computer learning to train the neural network, allowing the car to recognize items in the environment and react accordingly. Here's a clip of Elon Musk talking about LiDAR versus camera systems at the Autonomy Day earlier this year. They're all going to dump LiDAR, that's my prediction. Mark my words. Um, I should point out that I don't actually super hate LiDAR as much as it may sound, um, but at SpaceX, uh, SpaceX Dragon uses LiDAR to navigate to the space station and dock. Not only that, we, the, SpaceX developed its own LiDAR from scratch to do that, and I spearheaded that effort personally, because in that scenario, LiDAR makes sense. And in cars, it's friggin' stupid. It's expensive and unnecessary, and as Andre was saying, once you solve vision, it, it's worthless. So you have expensive hardware that's worthless on the car. The, we do have a forward radar, which, which is low cost and is helpful, especially for occlusion situations. So if there's like fog or dust, or, or you know, snow, the radar can see through that. If you're going to use active photon generation, don't use visible wavelength, because once you, with, with passive optical, you've taken care of all visible wavelength stuff. You want, if you, you, you want to use a wavelength that is occlusion penetrating like radar. So, so LiDAR is just active photon generation in the visual spectrum. If you're going to do active photon generation, do it outside the visual spectrum in the radar, in, in the radar spectrum. So like at 3.8 millimeters versus 400 to 700 nanometers, you're going to be have much better occlusion penetration, um, and that's why we have a forward radar. Um, and then we also have uh, ultra, 12 ultrasonics for, for near field information, um, in addition to the eight cameras and, and, and the, the forward radar. Um, you only need the radar in the forward direction because that's the only direction you're going real fast. So, that, so, I mean, we've gone over this multiple times, like, are we sure we have the right sensor suite? Should we add anything more? No. The advantages of a camera-based system are, of course, that it's very inexpensive to implement cameras on a car. It can be trained through computer learning to recognize objects, and so you could train this system to recognize objects, drop the car somewhere where it had never been before, and it could still find its way around. A camera-based system allows the car to read signs. Our current road system is set up for human vision, of course, and so a system that is based off human vision, of course, a camera, that's computer vision, it allows it to read signs and react accordingly like a human would. And of course, cameras allow for a very sleek, built-in design that doesn't take away from the aesthetics of the car. 
The disadvantages of the camera-based system is just that it takes a lot more computer learning work and data input and this time and computing power is just very intensive. So now that we kind of know the difference between the LiDAR-based system and the camera-based system, I want to go over the sensors that Waymo currently uses on their cars to navigate around their environments. So of course, as we mentioned before, they use LiDAR sensors on the front, top, and back of the car. They also have a vision system, so they do have a camera that aids in the surroundings and driving the car. They have a radar system in both the front and the back. And then they have supplemental sensors, which is they describe as their audio detection system that can hear police and emergency vehicle sirens. And they also add a GPS so it knows where it is based on a map. Tesla's suite of autopilot sensors includes eight cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and a front radar system. The ultrasonic sensors are simply used to measure the distance by using ultrasonic waves. It allows it to know how close it is to an object. Of course, they use the cameras and the radar as well for a vision of the environment around it. The second category that I want to talk about is the approach. How are each one of these companies approaching the problem of solving full self-driving? So currently, we know Waymo is using a LiDAR Based system. And they must currently map the entire section that Waymo is able to drive on. They have to go through and do 3D maps for an area, and then they have what they call their geofencing, meaning you can only operate Waymo in the full self driving functions in this geofenced map. And so here is a picture from Waymo's website and it shows what their current driverless territory is in the Phoenix metro area and what they hope to expand to in the future. And so Waymo's approach is to use LiDAR and to geofence and map specific areas in the city and allow their cars to be used in those areas. Tesla on the other hand is using computer learning and computer vision that means once they're Feature complete with full self-driving, Tesla vehicles will be able to drive autonomously almost anywhere in the world. There will be no geofencing required. What about the cost of these vehicles? Of course, the cost is going to be important as they implement these features into cars, whether that means a robo-taxi network or they decide to sell these vehicles to the public as well. The cost is going to be a big one. Well, currently, the retail price of the Waymo Chrysler Pacifica minivan they use to convert into their Waymo taxi has a retail price of around $40,000. It's a hybrid, and if you look that up, the Pacifica hybrid of 2019 is around $39,900. Then, of course, you realize there are a number of LiDAR sensors, and you start adding around $7,500 for each one of those, plus the computer system and all the rest of the tech they put into the car. And a very conservative estimate would be that it would be around $100,000 for this car, but I assume it's actually way more. But minimum of $100,000 for each one of these taxis they put out on the road. Tesla, on the other hand, has a model, the Model 3 SR Plus, which has a retail price of $39,000. $990. So the same base price of the Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan that Waymo uses, but Tesla's car already includes all the chips, all the sensors, and everything that it needs for full self-driving. Also layer in the fact that the current leases for the Model 3 don't allow you to buy the car because Tesla has mentioned that they're going to turn these cars into their robo-taxi network. So essentially, they're getting these cars at a huge discount where the customer has already taken a lot of the depreciation of that vehicle. So the actual cost for Tesla will be much lower. And this is not even factoring in the fact that Tesla makes between 15 and 20% margin on their cars as well. Another important factor to compare between the two companies is the current fleet size. How many cars do each of these companies have out in real world situations? Well, based on my research, Waymo currently has 600 autonomous vehicles on the road. They have an order in for 62,000 more Chrysler Pacificas, 
and they have also placed an order for 20,000 Jaguar I-Paces as well. Tesla, on the other hand, has well over 600,000 cars on the road right now with hardware version 2 and above that are capable of full self-driving once Tesla releases those feature through a software update. On Lex Friedman's website, he put a nice graphic that he created, and you can check this out. I'll put a link in the description. But he estimated that there are currently 625,570 cars with Autopilot 2 hardware plus, and that was as of Q3 2019. So by, by the end of Q4 2019, there of course be um, around 100,000 more cars plus on top of that. So we'll be over the 700,000 mark by the end of 2019. Now the next important thing to consider is the data being collected by this fleet. So of course, as we mentioned, Waymo has 600 vehicles, Tesla has 600,000 plus, and really close to 700,000 vehicles on the road collecting data and giving them information. So with all this information, Waymo has recently put out that they have driven well over 10 million miles on real-world roads autonomously since 2009. And while that seems impressive, especially when you compare that to the rest of the competition, Tesla is estimated, also by Les Friedman, to reach 2 billion miles driven on autopilot with full stealth driving features included in those by January 2020. So when you look at this for a minute, 10 million sounds impressive, but then you realize that Tesla, by the end of this year, will have data from 2 billion plus miles driven with their hardware systems. This is an incredible amount of data and is a huge, huge benefit for the Tesla engineers that are working on computer learning and computer vision. Tesla has recently released features like Navigate on Autopilot, which allows the Tesla vehicle on autopilot on the highway to change lanes and also able to take exits all by itself. They also released features like Smart Summon, which allows the vehicle to take itself out of a parking lot and come meet you at the curbside or come find you wherever you are. And it's a pretty incredible feature that is a step towards full self-driving. So in the race towards autonomous driving, data is king. As you know, the real world is very unpredictable. People, humans do very irrational things and they don't always follow the traffic laws and the laws that are around on signs. So because of this, the more real world data that can be collected, the better. This allows for you to anticipate and solve the equations that are needed for all the corner cases. And so you can solve these and make sure the cars react accordingly like they should. Tesla has all the real world data for their global fleet. If you think about that for a minute, they have a global fleet. They have data not only for the United States, Canada, Europe, all over the world. They have this data that they're building currently, billions of miles of data. Waymo, this 10 million miles of data, while that's a lot of data, it's only for specific areas that have been mapped. They have data for the Phoenix metro area mainly. Tesla is also working to solve computer vision and has hundreds of thousands of its owners helping them with this data. Waymo has to pay their engineers to drive all these miles and map it out and get these areas geofenced, and that's very expensive and time intensive. So based on all these data points that we've discussed, who is going to win the race? Well, I think it becomes very obvious when you think about the data, when you think about the features, and you think about the number of cars on the road with the hardware necessary to be full self-driving, I think it becomes pretty obvious that Tesla is poised to get there quicker than any other company. Now, currently, Waymo is operating at level four. According to the SAE, they have a list of what they consider autonomous driving. They have levels zero to five. Currently, Tesla is operating at level two officially, and Waymo is operating at level four. So at first glance, you would say, well, of course, Waymo's ahead. They're doing level four. Tesla is only at level two. But this level four is in geofenced areas only that have been very intensively mapped and they're using really expensive sensors to put on these cars to get this done. Once this is all done, the cost of a fleet 
and the cost of preparing the maps for these areas is very substantial. Tesla, on the other hand, is level two, but once they solve computer vision, they're ready to go. All they have to do is simply flip the switch and the entire fleet is ready to be autonomous. Their biggest issue right now of getting to full self-driving is the millions of corner cases that exist in the real world. As we mentioned before, the real world is unpredictable and Tesla is currently having to train their neural network to deal with all these corner cases. And in my opinion, Tesla will likely solve full self-driving and have a feature complete system. May not be approved for use yet, but they'll have a feature complete system by the end of 2020. And at that point, they'll have well over a million cars instantly ready. So like I mentioned, I believe Tesla is poised to get there much quicker than anyone else. I think they'll be feature complete by the end of 2020. I think regulation and things like that will take quite a bit of time to officially allow that. But maybe by the end of 2021, 2022, we might have regulators approve it. And it might be ready for you just to fall asleep and let the car drive you around the city. Companies like Waymo and others that are using LiDAR systems, I think are still five years to a decade away from reaching this. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned some things and I hope you enjoyed going through the data comparing these two companies. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing so you can see future content that comes out in the future. Also, if you did like it, go ahead and click that like button. That does help the video get seen by more people. Thank you so much.